Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. We're at episode number 1682 and today we're going to take a bit of a digression away from the visual dictionary, the complete visual dictionary and you know, in fact we're probably going to make a hard left away from it in general because as I've been flipping through it, you know, what I said to you in a previous show about there being, you know, materially not a lot of differences between this and the actual visual dictionary for The Last Jedi and for The Force Awakens and for others. You know, there are some differences, but not a heck of a lot of them. But one of the things that has been, you know, nagging at the back of my consciousness has to do, you know, with the awakening thing that we talked about yesterday. But in particular, the fact that it's the cosmic force that is spoken of in regard to this awakening. And there's a cosmic force and a living force, and they are talked about in two distinct fashions. In fact, Qui-Gon Jinn is probably the first person who introduced us to the concept of the living force when he told Obi-Wan in The Phantom Menace to you know, keep his mind on the living force and to you know, stay in the here and now and in the present moment. And so I feel like it's rather important to discuss this differentiation between the cosmic force and the living force because it also may inform something that rewires the way we talked about the awakening yesterday. So let's get into it. First of all, we need to make the distinction between the cosmic force and the living force. And there are a couple of ways to do it. First of all, we can talk about the living force as being about living creatures. And we can talk about the cosmic force as being about all things, not just living creatures, but actually all things, period, paragraph. So that's one dimension through which you could look at it. Another dimension that you could look at has to do with what Qui-Gon said to Obi-Wan about being in the present moment and the idea that the living force is sort of the representation of the now. Like, you know, think of Eckhart Tolle who wrote the book The Power of Now and Stillness Speaks and other things like just the idea that only the present moment exists so, you know like the past you know that was a present moment that is no longer accessible to us like all we have access to in our existence is now and now and now and now and now and that's what the living force is a representation of whereas the cosmic force is the entirety of the fabric of space-time and because of that when you think about you know, say relativity, for example, and the idea that, you know, maybe past and future and present are all just kind of intermingled as one thing in one way of thinking about, you know, what our real world universe is like, you could essentially equate the cosmic force to that. The idea that, you know, past and present and future, you know, all exist in kind of one mishmash in the cosmic force. And as living beings, the only way that most of us can really possibly live without going insane is to impose an idea of time in one direction onto it and so then you get you know the living force and our experience of the now but if you are able to tap into the cosmic force then things like what yoda talked about in the empire strikes back about you know like through the force things you will see the past the future old friends long gone right so being able to tap into the cosmic force allows you to tap into you know, past and future states in a way that you just can't do by only being present within the living force. But the future thing is where it gets a little bit tricky. As Yoda said, you know, he doesn't know if Han and Leia will die because, you know, always in motion is the future. It's very difficult to see. And yet, and yet it would be a little bit clearer, you would think, as the quote-unquote future gets closer to the quote-unquote now, because the level of probability would certainly decrease the closer into the now that you're trying to project the future. And so, as a result, you know, I think about the Force Awakening and it being the cosmic Force Awakening and possibly being triggered by Ray's 
you know, moment of crisis with, you know, having to survive the First Order attacking and piloting the Millennium Falcon. And, you know, like we talked about yesterday, just in moments of crisis, people being able to access powers within themselves that, you know, would otherwise, you know, be seen as, uh, you know, extraordinary or, um, you know, beyond the scope of what anybody would do, you know, lifting burning cars, that sort of thing. So the fact of that being the case that's something that you know we're putting it on there we're saying that that is the the moment because we have to look at things in a linear fashion because of the fact that you and i imposing time's arrow on this thing because snoke talks about an awakening before ray gets to takadana that must mean that there's, you know, the awakening already happened. And so the only thing that would make sense for that is Ray piloting the Falcon in that moment of crisis. But considering that people who are tapped into the cosmic force are able to discern, you know, past and future to some degree, and considering that, uh, you know, it's closer basically you know the fact that ray was about to touch the lightsaber within you know the space of a day right the probabilities are definitely pretty high for that one there's those considerations and then there's also the consideration that you know if the cosmic force is being stirred by an awakening of some kind well throughout the galaxy you would have to imagine that you know with billions of people if not trillions and quadrillions and quintillions of beings in the galaxy and how many of them must be force sensitive how many in the past 30 years must have been faced with their own crisis situations where some sort of force ability would manifest would awaken in its way and yet the cosmic force would not be stirred at all and i guess i should say that it's been quiet since the destruction of the jedi temple which we're roughly estimating as 10 years prior to the events of the sequel era because of the fact that luke hasn't been seen in 10 years it's probably less it's really probably less but be that as it may the reason why the cosmic force would likely not be stirred up by any of those moments is because there's nothing that has to do with Snoke and Kylo Ren being, you know, the major sources of force related difficulty coming to the galaxy at large. And so the only reason why something would get stirred up necessarily is if something was going to come in conflict with that particular side of the force with the dark side of the force and the only person that would be is ray she is the only person out of this multitude of force sensitive beings who is actually going to be coming into contact anytime soon or have the potential to come into contact anytime soon with ray or <laughs> with kylo ren and with supreme leader snoke so that's why, for one thing, the cosmic force would be stirring around her awakening because she's actually, like, just based on Time's Arrow, is already heading directly into the path of Kylo Ren and Supreme Leader Snoke. So that's that. But as far as whether the actual awakening moment is that piloting of the Falcon or it is the connection with the lightsaber, which is creating a virgence in the force. So the reason why Snoke could actually be talking about that moment, even though it happens in the future, has to do with what I was saying before about how you can use the Force, tap into the Cosmic Force to see the future, and though it would be difficult to say for sure what is happening, as events get closer to you, as you know, future events, if you're looking not too far out into the future, you could be more certain potentially about them. So... Snoke could actually be looking at the future and even though he's saying there has been an awakening even though he's talking about it as a past event he could be looking at it from the perspective of this is just so certain that it's going to happen like just all the probabilities of it not happening have practically been eliminated at this point it's just going to happen that he's talking about it like a past event and he's just you know communing with the cosmic force in his way and realizing that you know all right it's on now because now the person who is you know rising from the light side to meet the dark side that person has been found in the person of ray so there you go a meditation 
on the cosmic force and the living force and how it might apply to the awakening in the sequel era. Um, there's one utterly unrelated thing that I want to mention to you um, in just a moment here. And first, I got to say, hey, I hope you'll subscribe to the show if you're not doing so already, as I always say. And additionally, I hope you'll consider supporting this Daily Dose of Star Wars Joy by joining me at patreon.com slash SW7X7. And now for something completely different. There's a gentleman named Ryan Dassing whose voice you've actually heard on the podcast if you've been listening for a while. He interviewed me for the Titans of Star Wars podcasting segment that was running on the Less Than 12 Parsecs podcast. And I had an excerpt of that interview here on our show a while back. So Ryan is hyped for the debut of The Mandalorian, and as part of the run-up to it, he wanted to send his vintage Boba Fett action figure around the world to various Star Wars fans and have that action figure photographed in various locations where, you know, things that are of, of note and interest wherever they would end up. And so... You know, he was also hoping to get Boba Fett in Star Wars Celebration Chicago and get photos there. And also eventually with the debut of The Mandalorian on Disney Plus, you know, get Boba ready for the premiere viewing for it too. So Boba started off from Maryland, made it to New Jersey, to Colorado, to Texas, to Maine, and now... Boba Fett is in New Hampshire with me. And so there is a Facebook group called Boba Sees the World, and I will post a link to it in the show notes so you can check that out. And you can see some of the photos that have been posted, and I'm going to post some photos as well. Quizmaster Joe actually took him up to the top of a mountain earlier today as I'm recording this. And so there's some beautiful photos there, and I'm going to take him around for some other photos as well. I think you'll probably see production assistant Padme in one of the photos and hopefully studio intern Kato and studio manager Indy will pose <laughs> for photos as well but do check it out it's a very fun initiative and once Boba leaves here he's actually on his way to Kentucky so it's pretty awesome to see the photos that are being posted in the Boba Sees the World Facebook group I hope you will check it out again I will put the link for it in the show notes for today's episode and that is going to do it. And you'll also, you know, get to see photos then when <laughs> that happens too. So uh, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show here. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it. <laughs>